Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to kill once again two birds with one stone. We are going to evaluate the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine of a times t and keep in mind that a is just element of the real numbers. Hmm. How do we do that? We are going to use a small fact right here. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just take a look in the description. We are going to split this function right here, e to the at, up into the sum of an odd and even function. So just follow my thought process right here. So this is just Laplace transform of e to the at plus e to the minus at over 2 plus e to the at minus e to the minus at over 2. You might notice something. Those two look familiar. This is just the hyperbolic cosine of at and this is just the hyperbolic sine of at. And we can also use the linearity of the Laplace transform to split this whole thing up. So this Laplace transform right here is just the Laplace transform of the cosine, the hyperbolic cosine of at plus the Laplace transform of the hyperbolic sine of at. And that's nice. We can also use the linearity on this part right here. So we can just split this up. So that's Laplace transform of this term plus the Laplace transform of this term. And we are going to calculate both Laplace transforms right here. So we are going to start off with the hyperbolic cosine right here. Quite easy because the good thing is we already calculated e to the at, the Laplace transform, and the Laplace transform of e to the minus at. So we can just plug our information in. So let's at first take a look at the Laplace transform. Oh, that looks not so nice. That looks a bit better. <laughs> of e to the at plus e to the minus at over 2. The great thing is, one half is just a constant, so we can bring this to the outside. We can use the linearity of this linear operator. So let's bring this to the outside and then let's transform this right here, those two terms. And since they are additive, we can also split this up using the linearity. So what do we end up with? So this is just one half times. So the first Laplace transform of e to the at, we know what it is. That is just 1 over s minus a. And the Laplace transform of e to the minus a t is just 1 over s plus a. So we are changing the sign right here. So plus 1 over s plus a. And now we can expand both fractions right here and bring them together. We can add them together. So this is just 1 half times s plus a plus s minus a over s minus a times s plus a. Hmm. What is this right here? This is just s squared minus a squared. So at first this is one half and the denominator is something over s squared minus a squared. So what's the numerator? This cancels out and this cancels out so this is just 2s. And the nice thing is this one half and this two also cancels out. So what we end up with is just s over s squared minus a squared. <laughs> and that's great. We have to use a little um, trick right here because those two have different conditions for them to converge. So let's keep in mind, let's remember what the condition for this one right here was for it to converge. So at first we wanted so for 1 over s plus a. We know that the real part of s has to be greater than a. And for the other term, 1 over s minus a, oh, I'm sorry, s minus a and here s plus a, we know that the real part of s has to be greater than minus a. Hmm. But there's a certain identity so when something is greater than a, for example, and the same something is greater than minus a, then we know that this something is greater than the absolute value of 
A right here. So I will prove this in another video, just um, take it as it is right now. So we know when we bring those two conditions together that the real part of S has to be greater than the absolute value of A. And yeah, well, that's the Laplace transform of the hyperbolic cosine of AT under the condition that the real part of S is greater than the absolute value of A. So this is just um, the Laplace transform of the hyperbolic cosine of A times T. And we are going to use the same procedure for the hyperbolic sine. Okay. For the hyperbolic sine, um, keep in mind that the condition is the same. So for it to converge, the real part of S also has to be greater than the absolute value of A. Okay, let's look at the Laplace transform of e to the at minus e to the minus at over 2. Just as before, we can use the linearity to split it up and bring this one half to the outside. So this transform is just one half times 1 over s minus a minus 1 over s plus a. Okay, once again, we can expand those fractions and add them together. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just one half times. So in the numerator, that's s plus a minus s plus a over the same denominator as before. So that's s squared minus a squared. And now we just have to take a look at what cancels out. So this minus s and this s cancels out. So what we end up with is just one half times 2a over a squared minus a squared. And as before, this one half and this two cancels out. So in the end, the Laplace transform of the hyperbolic sign is nothing else than a over s squared minus a squared under the condition that the real part of s is greater than the absolute value of a. And then we are done. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Recommend me if you like. And until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya.